the idol is over. And I guess the biggest question is, will I ever be the same? That's right, friends. I am the man you may know as Z, and I am from Our Reviews Will Kill You, and I am here to do a recap on The Idol. I just had a couple of random thoughts that I wanted to put together along with now that we've seen the entire thing, what do we think, what are we doing, five episodes in, and I feel like I had some thoughts. Uh, I'll start with the random thoughts, then we'll talk a little bit about a recap, and then how some of the internal logic of the show doesn't make that much sense. But first, let's talk about the things that I didn't like off the bat. Um, definitely, one thing that was kind of astonishing to me was that The Weeknd did all this music, and I'm not super familiar with all of his songs. Uh, but I thought he was kind of talented, but everything sounded kind of samey at some point. Like I just all sounded like random piano playing with the like even Joss's music. Everybody's music sounded the same, and probably because he's you know an artist and does his music. Uh, but I wasn't super impressed. Just thought it was kind of like bland. Um, it was too melodramatic at points. The other thing I thought was really weird and just like missing a lot of marketing was um, I I don't understand why they didn't release like the single World Class Singer or, or World Class Sinner. They didn't like release that as a thing until much, much after, like later after the show was already started playing. And then you have the point, and this is obviously going to be spoilers, but you have Jenny from Blackpink, who's this huge international celebrity who's supposed to perform. She basically steals world, world class center, and you never get to hear a version of her. Hell, you never even get to hear her sing. So that's a little strange. The the hit single <laughs> that Joss is supposed to uh, play, I don't know what it's called because I don't know that they even mentioned it in the song. Something about Daddy. And, uh, yeah, not real impressed with that song ever. Not, they, they were all like jumping, all oh, these block to block hits, they're so good. I can't believe how great Joss's music is. And she basically just puts on a strip show while like writhing, writhing and thrusting. Did anyone get Showgirls vibes in that final episode? Raise your hand if you did. I'm telling you, this is, but here's what I find kind of interesting. As much as I hate watched it, I'm going to say not that it grew on me, but I might look back at this in several years and be like, it's kind of like Showgirls. It's like a Showgirls moment because <laughs> this seems to me like Doge Dog tells us, don't leave, you know, leave, don't leave things to amateurs. At this point, Sam Levinson strikes me a little bit as like amateurish uh, and seemingly wanted to make it look cinematic but ultimately just made a bland show i mean if you really think about what actually happened in this and does it even logically make any sense before we do the recap let's see what the fans had to say about it we've got the tomato meter just to to consolidate it so it wasn't as it's not like one of those shows that's like five percent or like unwatchable it's a guilty pleasure you may hate it so much and cringe so much that it's it's kind of gold in its own little way like none of these people are good actors i i don't have any feeling i don't like any of the lead actors at this point i don't think i'd ever be like yeah that's an actor i need to see again uh, i don't know what's going on with lily rose depp but the girl needs to stop smoking cigarettes uh, clearly, the weekend should not leave his day job. <laughs> his weekend gig of acting needs to end. <laughs> uh, but I did like a couple of rays of hope that I enjoyed. I really enjoyed um, Divine Joy Randolph was stellar. I thought she was fantastic. Hank Azaria. I mean, these are the pros. They're perfect. You know, good actors, just doing their thing. Eli Roth, once again, made, made me want to vomit in my mouth, as usual. He just, he's that guy. <laughs> I don't, I don't understand. Uh, 
how a guy gets so much play off of one movie. If you ever saw his one of his more fairly recent movies, Green Inferno, it's absolutely one of the that is just dreadful, not even good or funny. And how he got so much play off of Cabin Fever, I will never understand because he's just not that good at anything. And I guess he got lucky to be in Inglorious Bastards. I just don't. They should have had Adam Adam Sandler, and we'd still be talking about it that those particular scenes, but. Critic consensus has it every bit as florid and sleazy as the industry it seeks to satirize. The idol places itself on a pedestal with unbridled style, but wilts under the spotlight. Yeah, I just there was nothing. I, I don't take anything out of this and go, yeah, that was that was that was awesome. Uh clearly the audience didn't like it. The critics the critics hated this show, but I think some people could get the 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 whole thing of it being a guilty pleasure. We clearly enjoyed this on some level because we were yelling at it, being like, what are you doing? So let's talk about the plot. Let's briefly talk about the plot. Here you have a singer who had a nervous breakdown and and, and I'm just going by what the plot gives me now that we know all the all the pieces are in place. That somehow this this girl who's too, who can't wake up on time has to have someone she pays to wake her up every morning. And she gets mixed up somehow realized that one of her backup dancers was a plant and her backup dancer ended up taking her to a nightclub where she gets to meet tedros tedros decides to she becomes smitten with him she needs a muse so she's going to use this man and all of his like cult like kids who she didn't know any of them existed from what i understand put lets him assemble his cult in her house then has said cult torture one of her long lifelong best friends which she contributes to the torture then throws him out of her life after she uses his connect his connections that he has to kanye's producer she is a megastar she could hire any producer she wants in the world she needs this guy's producer somehow and throws the abusive boyfriend out because you know he's spanking her with uh he's beating her with a with a with her hairbrush and whatever choking her and i guess she and then she allows her ex-boyfriend to get blamed for uh an essay that happened at her house so she could be criminal party to that but they don't talk about that and then puts together a banger of an album after all this craziness happens and turns the tables on the girl who stole her song. So her backup dancer uh, is basically has a label but can't put out any music unless she writes her own music, which is ridiculous because Joss doesn't write her own music. Neither Britney Spears doesn't write her own music. Britney Spears didn't write Baby Hit Me One More Time. That's, that song got shopped around for years and years. It, it got shopped around. And in fact, um, who is it? Uh, a, 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 not, it's not Salt and Pepper, but there's another famous group, the Don't Go, Don't Go Chasing Waterfalls group with t Boz and I don't know who the other people are in the group, but you know who I'm talking about. They passed on that song. So here you have it where at, by the end, she gets her tour because she puts together a super group of homeless underage children and takes them on tour <laughs> and then decides in front of all her fans that the guy that she didn't have a good relationship with and fought with most of the time is the love of her life and brings her back into her life just to piss off her management this is her grand plan now tell me on what planet any of that makes sense right I don't really the, the the grand twist is that she let him beat her because she needed to be she needed a muse. Her mom used to beat her, so she needed another someone else to beat her. She couldn't find anybody. She has assistance she could pay to beat her. But no. And the only thing that I'll reiterate, which uh in the season finale I thought would have been would have been good. Um but there's there's this there's this term in, in stage plays and in movies. It's called che I think it's called Chekhov's gun. If you show a gun in the first act, you must use said gun by the third act. And nobody really 
uses one. And I was waiting while they did that 20 minute music showcase in the final scene for Tedros to come in and, and kill everybody and maybe kill himself. And that would have been the most satisfying ending. I could have, I would have, everybody dead. Nobody lives. Maybe Chaim and Destiny live, but nobody else. Maybe the producer and his friends, because he clearly wasn't acting and thought it was all hilarious. Uh, we almost got a very different show, apparently. The original version of the show was probably supposed to be more like a Britney Spears thing, because apparently uh, she had a kid sister that they didn't have. Um, let's see here. They have a picture of her. There was some sort of kid sister that they had in there, and, and her room was supposed to be pink and playful. I'm sure she wasn't supposed to be naked in every single episode except the last episode. And The weekend would like you to support the vision and keep pushing for another season of The Idol. You know, the season where they're married or something and he starts beating her again, but she really turns it back on him and makes him a chump. Like, what? what how's their second season of this? What, what could there possibly be? Unless you... The only characters who could come back would be Hank Azaria and, you know, Chaim and Destiny. And that's it. And like maybe the, the fringe people, but none of it makes any sense. Why even have Jenny from Blackpink not sing? Her English isn't that good. I, it's, it's fine, but she clearly sounds like she's not ready to act. And that's fine. You know, that's that's okay. But, but why put her in a scene where she needs to act that hard? And why not play to her strengths of singing and dancing and give us a version of a world-class singer, singer that she does? Maybe she didn't want to sing the lyrics? I don't know, because the lyrics are dreadful. Uh, so anyway, all of it is just... I don't know. I don't know. But again, guilty, guilty pleasure. I watched it. If you're watching this, you probably watched it. So let me know... Was this a guilty pleasure for you? Is this something that you... does? Did it logically make sense to you? They're practically... She's on a wedding dress on stage with Mauricio Jackson, a.k.a. Tedros Tedros. Uh, did you feel that she... Did she earn that twist? Or did she not earn the... I don't think she earned the twist personally. But do you? I, this is very confusing. But I will say I enjoyed... At the end of the day... It kept me entertained, just like Showgirls does. If you ever go back in time, or if you ever get a chance to watch Showgirls, you watch Elizabeth Berkley from whatever, uh, I want to say, it's some old show. Oh, last, Saved by the Bell, that's it. You want to watch something cringy, watch that. And see what happened to all those actors. Most of them didn't act in a lot after that. So, anyway, thank you so much for listening. I appreciate it. We do have a podcast we'd love you to subscribe to. It is free. It's on iTunes, Stitcher, and Spotify. We also live stream at 7.30 p.m. Friday nights, Eastern Standard Time. Thank you so much. We enjoyed the idol with you, but it's time to move on. And I, myself, am on to the next one. Mm -hmm.